إن الحمد لله نحمده ونشكر ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله وبعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we glorify him and we thank our creator our sustainer our rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favors and his bounties upon us and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy and his forgiveness we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his protection and his guidance and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those who are sick to grant them shifa those who are in difficulties to grant them ease and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all from all sickness and from the evil and the whispers and the temptations of shaitan and from the evil of our own selves and we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his peace and blessings unto his beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and unto his household and his companions and unto all those who follow him my dear gathering it is that time of the year where one of the thing that people start thinking about is resolution new year's resolution and even though this is not the islamic new year still many people start to think about their plans for the next year and the most common resolution is around health and wealth the popular resolution is i am too fat so i need to lose weight or i need to buy a car next year or i need to save for a house and we make these resolutions and nothing is wrong with having plans and having goals in fact we must have plans as muslims we must have goals in our lives but the problem with these new year's resolution is by the time february comes the resolutions are out the window and everyone is back to their normal habits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Quran reminds us of a resolution that as Muslims we make every year, every month, every week, every single day. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim wa sari'u ila maghfiratin min rabbikum wa jannatin arduha as-samawatu wal ard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us make this resolution every day every week, every month, every year hasten, make effort strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can earn his maghfirah and you can earn the jannah the jannah that he has prepared for us and that is our goal to work towards that Jannah that Allah says He has prepared it for us and it is important 
that we keep this at the front and center and the back of our mind. This particular goal. Because every single year, every month, every week, every day that passes, we are closer to our grave. We are closer to that time when we will be referred to as bodies. Where people will not say Sheikh Nazim. Where people will not say President of here. Where people will not say the husband of so and so, or the brother of so and so, or the father of so and so. They will say what? When are we washing the body? Where are we taking the body? Which cemetery we will bury the body? We are stripped of our names and our titles. And we become just bodies. And it is important that we prepare and strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before that day comes when we are stripped of everything else. And the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to make a dua every year and every month. And it is reported that they used to memorize this dua and teach it to their children like they will memorize the Quran. Why? Because it was their goal. And what was that dua at the beginning of every year and every month? Allahumma adkhilhu alayna bil amni wal iman wa salamati wal islam wa jiwarim min al shaytan wa rida wa ridwanum min al rahman. O oh Allah, bring this new year, bring this new month upon us with security and with iman and with safety and with Islam and with protection from shaitan and with the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was their resolution to strengthen their iman to strengthen their stand against shaitan to earn the pleasure of our rahman of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was their resolution and it is important that we do the same that every morning we wake up, our resolution should be, how do I get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And it is important we do that because when you do that, when you strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are maintaining your identity as a servant of Allah, as a slave of Allah, as among the ibad of Rahman, one who is a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are free in yourself every single day you are free in yourself from the slavery of wealth and fame from the slavery of fashion that I have to do what other people do from the slavery of what other people will say and think about me from the slavery of society and every day you are reminding yourself I am not a slave of any of this my goal is to please Allah. I am only a slave of Ar Rahman. And we need to renew this connection because every one of us, no matter how much you claim you are a practicing Muslim, you pray five times a day, you recite Quran every day, you fast twice a week, you go to Hajj and Umrah frequently, no matter who you are, your Iman will fluctuate it will increase and it will decrease. And it is imperative that every day we seek to strengthen that connection because there are, will be time. And we are all in the same boat on this. Whether you are an Imam or a Sheikh or a Hafiz or Quran, you will go through this. Where there will be times when you will be at a high. You just heard of a khutbah and you are motivated and you are at a high. But as soon as you leave the masjid in an hour or two, it wears off. In Ramadan, you are at a high. A few days after, you are back to your routine. Where your Islam is just about halal and haram. And the way you dress. Or you go to Hajj and after a few weeks, you are back to your routine. Everything is mechanic. Halal and haram, that's your Islam. So it's important that every single day we seek to renew and strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And shaitan 
will not rest. Shaitan will continue to attack us. Even if you pray five times a day. Even if you give charity every day. And you fast regularly. And you recite Quran. And you, you're doing all the good things that you can do. Shaitan will come at you. And that is why every single day we have to be on our guard and get closer to Allah. Because shaitan will come and whisper to us. Even when we pray and we do the good things, he will come and whisper to us. And he will put arrogance in our ears and our hearts. And he will tell us, you are better than the other person. You are a good Muslim, that, those are bad people. You should become a haram police. You try to fix everything. And then you start to build arrogance. Shaitan will attack you. And when you commit a sin, Shaitan will come and tell you, you have no hope, you should give up. So we need to make sure we strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because every single one of us will make mistake. Kullu ibn Adam khatta. Every child of Adam, that's every one of us, we will make mistakes. We are not angels. There's none of us here today who can say, I never made a mistake. That's the angels only. We will make mistake. And that is why we need to constantly turn to Allah and strengthen our connection and ask for his forgiveness. We need to strengthen our connection with Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you want to find him when you are in need, Maintain that link. Remember me and I will remember you. You want Allah to remember you when you are in difficulties, when you are struggling, when you are having problems in your home, when you are having an addiction problem, when you are depressed, when you are sad. You want Allah to remember you? Allah says, I will remember you, but make sure that the link is there between you and I. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Ihfazi la yahfazka. Ihfazi la tajiduhu tujahak. Maintain your connection to Allah. He will protect you. He will guide you. Maintain your connection with Allah and strengthen your connection. You will find him there when you need him. My dear brothers and sisters, we know that, that this connection with Allah, we have to continue to strengthen it. But how do we do that? How do we do that? How easy it is? Can we just sit and say, I want to strengthen my connection with Allah, I will become a better Muslim and it will happen just like that? Can you say, I want to lose weight and you sit in front of your TV? twisting your finger, flicking from cable TV to Netflix and think that you will lose weight? Can you say, I want to strengthen my connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and suddenly the Quran will be in your head and you will start to pray five times a day? No, we have to have a program. We have to have a actions. We have to take actions. There are steps we need to follow. And in this few minutes, I want to outline for myself first and for you some activities, practical activities that we can do and they are by no means in systematic order. But everyone is important, just like our body. Every single muscle support the other. We need to make sure that we strengthen the muscles of our Iman. There is no one activity you can do and say, I will do this alone and this will suffice me. You cannot say, I will fast every day and do nothing else. And that will make you a better person. There are multiple things we need to do because every activity engages our Iman in a different way. And the first and foremost is that if we want to strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to know who Allah is and remind ourselves every single day of who is Allah. That Allah is Al Khaliq. He is the one who created me and created everything around me. He is Al Qadir. He is capable 
of doing the things that in my mind is impossible. He is a Samir. He listens to my dua. He hears my cry. He knows my suffering. When you keep reminding yourself about these, that Allah is in control and He is aware of your situation, then that will put that yaqeen in your heart. It will strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will give you ta that tawakkul that you only put your trust in Allah. Because why? Because you are convinced of who Allah is. So the first step is for us to every single day reminding ourselves of who my Creator is. Of His beautiful names that He told us. Wallillahi al-asma'ul husna fad'uhu biha. Allah says He has the beautiful names. Call upon Him with these names. Because when you say Al-Malik, you're reminding yourself of who Allah is. He's the one in control. He can change anything when the situation might look that like it's doom, that I have no chance. You remind yourself that Allah is Al-Qadir, He's Al-Malik. He can change anything. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Remember Allah constantly. In your daily life, when you wake up, you remember Allah. Before you sleep, you remember Allah. And every action we do as Muslims, there is a zikr. Before we enter the bathroom, we remember Allah. When we leave, we remember Allah. Before we eat, we remember Allah. After we eat, we remember Allah. When we leave our home, we remember Allah. When we enter our homes, we remember Allah. And think about it. When you remember Allah like this constantly, what it will do to your iman? What it will do for your protection? And if you don't know all these du'as, start by simply saying Bismillah in everything you do. You start your car, Bismillah. You put on your shoes, Bismillah. You enter your home, Bismillah. Start with that. And what that will do, it will tie every single action to the remembrance of Allah. Because who will say Bismillah and eat haram? Who will say Bismillah and curse? Who will say Bismillah and go somewhere where you're not supposed to go? It will remind you of your connection with Allah. So keep remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly in all our actions. Number three, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ya Rasulullah, I want something. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, tell me, what is it? He said, I want to be your companion in Jannah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, what else? He says, nothing else. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, then help me be kathratis sujood. Help me by making plenty sujood. Help me by making a lot of salah. Where you are making sujood constantly. Where you are in connection because when you are in sujood, you are in that position of a slave bowing to your master Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one is between it is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are making that connection constantly you are strengthening that connection so make extra sujood extra salah that is what will strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then number four you want to strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your daily dose should be the Quran. Every single day we should get a dose, a booster. You know they call it booster shot? We need that booster shot every day. Not only for COVID. We need that booster shot. And what is that? Turn the pages of the Quran every single day, but be consistent. Don't try to recite the entire Quran in a month and then the rest of the year 
it's not there. It will be painful. You will not benefit. Just like if someone goes to the gym for one day, what happens after that? And they never go back. They will feel pain. And they will not benefit. If the doctor gives you medication, he doesn't say, take it all one day. Take it every day. There is a prescription. Go to the Quran every single day. And let it be your booster every day. That will strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then importantly, make sure that your heart is protected. Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Inna fil jasadi mudha. In the body is a piece of flesh. Iza salahat salah al jasadu kullu. If that is sound and healthy, then all your action of your actions of your body will be in line. Wa iza fasadat fasad al jasadu kullu. And if that is rotten, if the heart is rotten, then the body will be rotten and all your actions will be rotten. How do you protect that heart? And if you want to make a new year resolution, let it be to protect your heart. How do you protect it? You protect all the inlets, the eye that feeds the heart. Because everything you see, it dumps it on the heart. So if you look at garbage, it dumps garbage on your heart. The air feeds the heart. So if you listen to garbage, it puts garbage on your heart. Every one of your limbs feeds the heart. So protect the heart and protect the environment of the heart. Because if you, can, if you want to clean the heart, if you clean something, you wear beautiful clothes and you take a bath, but you go outside and you roll in filth, what happens? Then you're in filth again. You know, there's a beautiful hadith of a man, and I will not mention the entire hadith because it's so long. But briefly, there was a man who killed 99 people. And he went to a monk and he says, I have committed 99 murders. Will Allah forgive me? And the monk says, no, you are far gone. Your case is closed. You killed 99 people. So he killed the monk and he said, okay, this is 100. Then he went to a scholar. And he says, I've killed 100 people. Will Allah forgive me? But they are two profound, beautiful things that the scholar said to him. He says, who can come between you and the forgiveness of Allah? Who can come between that? Even if you kill me and make me one, one on one. That's between you and Allah. You seek Allah's forgiveness? No, I can't come between you and Allah. Nobody can come between you and Allah. That's between you and Allah. But the second thing he told him, he says, you need to do something. You need to take an action. You need to change your environment. This place that you live in, where you are being influenced, where it's easy for you to commit crime, where you have all your friends, leave. Go somewhere else where you will not have this influence. He says, change your environment. If we want to protect our heart, we have to make sure that our hearts are in safe environment, that we are surrounded by people who, if we slip, they will pull us up. If we make a mistake, they will help us. They will encourage us. Because there are people, while there are people who can help us, there are people who can poison our mind and encourage us to do wrong things. Look at your company. Look at your friends. Look at how your associates. Look at your environment. And ask yourself, is this safe for my heart? Is this safe for my heart? Is this the right environment? I need to get out of this pit. I need to get out of this filth. Because if you are in a pit of filth, 
I can bring the fire engine and you will still be dirty as long as you're in there. But if you come out of there, you can easily be washed. So look at your environment and change it. Also, my brothers and sisters, if we want to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can get and strengthen that connection through others. How do we do that? Through others. By helping others. Allah will help us as long as we help others. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, ما من مسلم يغرس غرسا A Muslim will not plant a seed. فَيَأْكُلُ مِنْهُ طَيْرٌ أَوْ إِنسَانٌ أَوْ بَهِيمَةٌ إِلَّا كَانَ لَهُ بِهِ صَدَقًا You plant a seed and that tree grows. And a bird came and eat from it. Or an animal came and benefit from it. Or human beings benefit from the fruits. It will be sadaqah for you. Imagine that. You plant a seed and a bird ate from it and it is sadaqah for you. Think about helping the less fortunate. How much that will be for you. How much that will strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is not only making donation online or putting five dollars in the box. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam encouraged us, you want to get close to Allah? Make physical connection. Make physical connection, get involved. When a companion asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I feel my heart is, you know, harshness in my heart. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he did not say just give charity and go home. He says, rub the head of the orphan. Physical connection by doing that. Visit a soup kitchen and help. Volunteer somewhere where you can help others physically. Make that physical connection. That will strengthen your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised his companion. Also, my dear brothers and sisters, we can strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through nature. And it is important and one of the things I have been encouraging people to do. Strengthen your connection to Allah through nature because the digital age that we live in we are losing our connection to nature, to the creation of Allah. We are children and adults. We are just glued to a screen. And we are losing that connection. Because when you go and interact with nature, it reminds you of the majesty of your creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created those gigantic mountains and even the breeze that passes through your ear or you listen to the wave in the ocean it reminds you of the greatness of Allah the one who created you created everything else it gives you that peace of mind there is something about the sound and the sight of nature that just give you inner peace. So I encourage my brothers and sisters, go outside and interact with nature. It gives you a fresh perspective, especially when you are in difficulties or when you are distressed or when you are sad. The place to be is not in your room. Go and take a walk outside. And when you look at the creation of Allah, you will realize that the problems you have, it is not so bad. Look at the majesty of Allah. Look at the universe Allah has created. And it reminds you of your goal that you should be connected to. And what is that goal? Jannah. When you interact with nature, it reminds you even though the things we see and the things we hear is nothing compared to real Jannah. But it reminds us of the beautiful things that Allah has prepared for us because throughout Al-Quran, Allah tells us about nature 
and about his signs. So when you look at the beautiful things, it reminds you of what you are working for. It motivates you. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us make it our goal every single day that we will strengthen our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will take practical step to make and maintain that connection. أقول كولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين my dear gathering it is important for us to have goals but how do we stay on track? How do we make sure that we don't set a goal and by the time end of January we lose sight of it and we fail? There are certain steps we need to take. And the first and foremost is we have to be prepared to make sacrifice. You know, in America what we say, there's nothing like free lunch. Nothing is for free. Don't think it will come easily. We have to be willing to make sacrifice. Just like the scholar said to the man who killed 99, who killed 100 people. He said, you have to do something. You have to make sacrifice. You have to move on. You have to leave your friends and your family and your associates and business, whatever. You have to leave. Do something. Make a sacrifice. Because regardless of what there will be pain but there is two type of pain there is a pain of discipline and there is a pain of regret choose one you want the pain of regret later or you want the pain of discipline being disciplined give up certain friends and company give up certain habits give up certain shows give up certain music Give up certain things that you contaminate your body with. Make that sacrifice. Wake up in the morning, it's cold. You have to make wudu, but you're making that sacrifice. Because nothing will come easily. When you make sacrifice, you will see the value of it. Also, make sure that your goals are concrete. Many times we say, oh, next year I will be a better Muslim. That's not a concrete goal. Next year, I will be a good Muslim. I will be a good father. I will be a good husband. That is not a concrete goal. Next year, I will fast more. That is not a goal. Next year, I will give charity. No. You have to be specific. If you are setting yourself a goal, what are the things that you will do? What is one thing you will do that will make you a better Muslim? If you want to lose weight, for example, it's not, I will lose weight. It is. I will walk 10 minutes a day. That's a specific concrete goal. I will fast one day a month. That's a concrete goal. I will start waking up for Fajr. That's a concrete goal. And if you are not praying any of your salah apart from Juma, then set yourself a simple goal. I will start to pray Maghrib every day. That's a specific goal. And when it becomes a habit, then you add to it. But you have to be specific and do things that are measurable. And you have to set goals that are realistic. Many times, why people, most people fail by January 12th, statistics have shows, shows, by January 12th, most people fail in the goals they set. Why? Because they set too high of a goal. If you haven't fast the entire year, don't plan fasting two days a week. Start with something simple. Start with once a month. If you haven't given charity for many years, don't start with, I will give $1,000 a week. Start with $5. Be realistic. In that way, you have something that you can eventually, it becomes a habit. Because we are, one great, one wise man said, we are the things that we do repeatedly, that's who we are. 
So set realistic goals and be consistent as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us inna habba al-a'mal ila Allah adwamuha wa inqal adwamuha wa inqal the deeds that are most beloved to Allah are those that you do repeatedly consistently if it's small but you do it regularly and don't compare yourself with others many times we compare ourselves with others He's praying five times a day. He's waking up for tahajjud. For me to be like him, I have to do the same. Don't compare yourself with others because everyone is a different level. You have a different program. You are at a different level of your development. So don't compare it, but take small steps. As the Prophet says, take small steps. When you come to Allah, a hand length, he comes to you an arm length. What the Prophet tells us, take small steps. When you come to Allah walking, He comes to you running. Small step. Walk first. Take your time. But the most important thing is, and this is what I will leave you with today, get started. Most people fail to get started. We make goals, but we never start. And the way you can get started is by setting simple goals. Don't start with, I will memorize one juice of the Quran. Start with, I will recite two lines of the Quran. In that way, you have something simple that you can start with. It becomes a habit and then you realize this is too simple. And you add to that. But get started. Set yourself a goal that you can achieve and it's simple enough that will motivate you to start and never give up. Even if you fail a thousand times, never give up. Because as long as there is life, the doors are open for you. The doors are open for you. Even if you have committed all the sins. Don't despair. Don't give up. Because a person who drowns is not someone who falls into a river. A person who drowns is one who falls in a river and stays at the bottom. But if you fall in and you can come out back, then you can become stronger. So never give up. Know that the doors of Maghfira is open. Let us all strive and work to strengthen our connection with Allah so that we can earn His Maghfira and we can earn the Jannah that He has prepared for us. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for my forgiveness and your forgiveness. I pray and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who recognize His majesty and who work for the Jannah that He has prepared for us. And I beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to give us the ability so that we can fulfill His commands. We can follow the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we can be among those who earn the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibad Allah, ittaqullah, inna Allah ya'mar wa bil'ad wal ihsan wa ita'i zil qurba wa yanhani al fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon aqim as-salam.